All right, guys. Uh, I'm come back with another live feed here and uh, bring this one in uh, sideways, so that way we can uh, get more of a broad picture. So I'm gonna hand the camera off to uh, Brother Asher and uh, maybe get out here and preach a little bit myself. There you go. As long as you don't block it on that side, yeah. Uh, as my brother said, we come out here tonight to lift up and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, we know many of you all come out here tonight to celebrate a holiday that you would all call Christmas Eve. That is Christ's Mass, proclaimed and declared by the Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> now we know that uh, Christmas or Christ's Mass has its root in pagan origins. But folks, if Christmas was truly about Jesus, then why would you be out here tonight drinking and carrying on in the bar district instead of focusing your attention on Jesus Christ? Why would you not be in the Word, reading and examining the Scripture, and spending time in prayer and communion with Jesus Christ? Now, nowhere in Scripture will you find that Jesus was born on December 25th. Nowhere in Scripture will you find that the, uh, the apostles and the disciples uh, celebrated Jesus annually. They didn't celebrate a Christmas celebration. Jesus did not command this of us to celebrate Christmas or to celebrate His birth every year. Jesus did give us one commandment to do in remembrance of Him. He said, whenever you take of the cup of communion, and eat this bread to do this in remembrance of me. Now that's the cup of, of, of wine for communion, but it's not the, the cup, uh, the shot glass of whiskey, it's not the mug of beer. <laughs> Maybe y'all have got it mixed up and confused here thinking you can come down to the bar district and have communion with a big mug of Corona or a big mug of Bud Dumber or Miller Low Life. But we're here to proclaim to you tonight the name of Jesus. And Jesus said to do that in remembrance of Him. Do communion in remembrance of Him. But many of y'all don't know Jesus. How are you going to do anything in remembrance of someone that you've never met? Someone that you don't know? So we've come down here tonight to introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says that if He would be lifted up, up on the earth that He will draw all men into Himself. We come up here to lift Him up, to exalt the holy name of Jesus tonight. You're okay, bro. So Jesus, y'all are here to celebrate, maybe in your, one way or another, Christmas, which is truly not about Jesus. It's never been about Christ. There's no putting right. Christ in Christ's mass when He was never a right. part of it to begin with. That's right. And it's certainly in this world, it's not about Christ. For if, but if, if, if there was just a little bit of Jesus in Christmas, many of y'all might think of the manger scene. Jesus lying in a manger coming into this world as a little baby, that little baby, so innocent, the baby that would grow and hang up on a cross and suffer for your sin and iniquity, who would bear upon himself the stripes that you might be healed, who would lay in the grave, lay in the tomb, and then three days later raise to life. Many of y'all might think of that little baby, that little Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Even the sin that you're committing against God tonight. Some of y'all come out on Christmas Eve to get drunk. Some of y'all might come out to get laid. Unfortunately, a lot of times what happens is fornication happens and unwanted pregnancy happens. Next thing you know, you're in an abortion clinic wanting to murder an unborn child that's in your womb. You know, the womb used to be the safest place for a child. 
Mothers used to care for their unborn children. These days, the womb is the furthest thing from a safe place for a baby. Mothers will murder their own child from their very womb. And this is where it all begins, folks. This is where it all begins. It starts with one or two drinks, and then you develop a buzz. Then it moves on from a, a state of buzz and intoxication to a state of drunkenness. Next thing you know, you've got some whoremonger pressing up on you, looking to get lucky. And he's going to bend you down for an evening and then forget all about you the next morning. But if you turn up pregnant, that's something that's not going to leave you the next morning. Go home! Stay here. Don't go home. Stay here. I've got a message for you. She looks intoxicated. Intoxication. Putting something toxic in your body. It's unnatural, folks. So we come tonight to cut off the, 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 that rotten fruit right at the root. That rotten fruit of baby murder. That rotten fruit of abortion. That rotten fruit of drunkenness. That rotten fruit of fornication. All of these things are sinful. All of these things are in transgression against the Holy God. Now the Apostle Paul said that uh, the, do not be deceived. He said, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. For neither fornicators, that is those having sex outside of marriage, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, that is idol worshipers, those of you that put anything above God, nor the effeminate, nor the sodomites or homosexuals, nor liars, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor revelers, nor drunkards, None of these will inherit the kingdom of God, folks. If you've made God's laundry list, that's God's standard. God will judge you by His standard. If you're living a life of revelry, drunkenness, sin and debauchery, and rebellion against God, then you will be judged, man, by His standards. Not my standards. Uh, my judgment does not matter. But... I can bring the Word of God tonight and warn you about how God will judge you by His standard. And He will judge you, folks. He's given all judgment over to the Son. The Bible says that same little Lamb of God that you remember on this day, the same little Lamb of God will come back in flaming fire to take vengeance upon those that know not God and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That should set many of you to trembling. The Bible says to work out your salvation through fear and trembling. Amen. You should fear. You should tremble before God if you're living in sin and transgression against Him. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.31 that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Oh, how fearful, folks. And Jesus said it Himself. He said, Fear not the man who can destroy your body or kill you and then do nothing more with you. But rather, fear the one that can destroy both body and soul in hell. He can destroy your body and soul. Cast them right into hellfire. What will you do on the day of judgment, folks? What will you do when you stand before the holy living God? What will you do when you stand before Jesus Christ upon His white throne? When you give every uh, account for every thought, word, and deed? You're going to give an account for this moment right here, I guarantee it. Whether you receive or reject the message the gospel preachers come with tonight, you will give an account one way or another. You have a choice to make, one or the other. You can either receive the message or you can reject the message. But the choice is up to you. I can't do it for you. 
you will give an account and I will be there as a witness. What will you do with the word preached tonight, folks? What will you do, sir? The Bible says death and life are set before you. Therefore, choose life that you might live. Now, folks, back several years ago, I would have been right here with you. I would have been down here getting drunk and having a good time. Oh, I love the strong drink. I love moonshine. I love to drink the beer. I would have been down here right with you, getting all drunk. But praise the Lord. Paul the Apostle, he said, as such were some of you. Talking about these drunkards and fornicators, he says, as such were some of you. But you are washed, you are justified, you are sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be washed, ma'am. You can be washed. You can be sanctified. That means set apart. Set apart from the world. You don't have to go to hell. You can receive the words of life in Jesus Christ. You can be justified. Not by your good works. Not by being obedient to the law. Not by turning from sin. But from turning from sin and turning to Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only way. He said He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but through Him. I'm not going to heaven because of my good works. I'm going to heaven because of, my, uh, because of God's grace. Through faith. Grace. Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for you, sir. You can laugh now. Laugh now, cry later, folks, if you don't receive the words of life. Jesus came to die for your sin. Your sin and your transgression. So you must repent, folks. The Bible says that let everyone that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. Now how do we know, folks? How do we know who the unbelievers are and who the believers are? Well, the Bible says that do not be deceived. Those that practice righteousness are righteous, even as He is righteous. The Bible says that he who is born of God doth not commit sin. For the, the seed of God, His seed remains in Him and He cannot sin. He said that that he who sins is of the devil. And this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. By the fruit they produce. Folks, if you're Christians, you need to live like a Christian. If you profess to be a Christian, you need to live like it. Amen. God's got a place for lukewarms. The Bible says in Revelation 3.16 that He says, I know your works. That you're neither cold nor hot. He says, I wish you were one or the other. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you from my mouth. That was the words of Jesus. If you're a lukewarm Christian, He will spew you from His mouth. There's no mediocre with God. The Bible says, without holiness, no man can see God. He says, to be perfect, even as my heavenly Father is perfect. Now you can't do it on your own. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Ghost, folks. If you're a Christian, live like it. I'm sure there's many of you that profess to be Christians. You'd be in here drinking on a Saturday night and in church the next morning with your hands raised. I know, I've stood next to these folks in these apostate churches. Alcohol on their breath. Wicked, shameful. The Bible says, let him the name the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. He says it like this, folks. On that day, many will come to him and say, Lord, Lord, have we not done great things in your name? Have we not prophesied? 
Have we not cast out devils and done these mighty works in your name? And he's going to say, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. They were workers of iniquity. They were living in sin. They professed Jesus, tried to call Him Lord, but they never made Jesus Christ their Lord. So today, folks, today if you would hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. Repent. Turn from your sin. Turn from your wickedness. Put down the bottle and pick up the Bible and turn to Jesus Christ. There's no other way but through Jesus Christ. All right, brothers, I'm going to sign off here and... Uh, I think Sister Diane is going to preach a little bit on her uh, acre, so God bless.